Water hammer results from trying to change a fluid's velocity suddenly. The resulting change of kinetic energy to pressure can result in huge pressure spikes. Water hammer is commonly associated with long pipes. So my system is gonna look like a tank up here with a long pipe that extends to a valve over here. The tank's filled with water. The fluid in this line has what is called an inertance, generally abbreviated as L. The pressure in the tank is P sub T, and the pressure here at the valve inlet is P sub V. The fluid has some flow rate. W dot is the mass flow rate. If I write a mathematical model of this system, which considers the fluid in this line to be all one lump with the same velocity or the same flow rate everywhere, I get what's called a lump parameters model. That model says that the pressure difference, PT minus PV, is equal to the inertance times the derivative of flow rate with respect to time. The inertance has a tendency to keep the flow rate from changing. It acts like inertia. So now we have a pressure difference between the tank and the valve, which is causing the fluid to flow through here. I'm gonna take this valve and close it suddenly. That means that down here, the rate of change of flow rate with respect to time has to go to negative infinity. It goes from some positive flow rate to zero. If this term here goes to negative infinity, that means that the pressure at the valve, PV, is gonna to go to infinity once I close that valve. This can't be right, since nothing goes to infinity in the real world. And maybe more importantly, this isn't a useful number. Any valve or pipe thickness I try to choose to withstand this load will automatically fail. So with this model, I'm dead in the water, so to speak. I need an actually useful mathematical model for this system if I'm going to design it to not break if I close this valve suddenly. What I need to do is abandon my assumption that all parts of the fluid have the same velocity. That will result in a distributed parameters approach. Now with a distributed parameters model, if I close this valve su suddenly, this fluid will suddenly stop. However, the information that the fluid down at the valve has stopped takes time to propagate up to the tank. The tank doesn't know that this fluid has stopped and it'll keep pumping fluid in up here. So the velocity here of the fluid at the tank doesn't change. This fluid has stopped and what I'm doing is jamming more fluid into the pipe. I have to compress the fluid in order to do this. That causes high pressure surges at the valve, but they don't go to infinity. In this model, it turns out that the valve pressure is proportional to the speed of sound times the fluid velocity before I close the valve. So this is the product of sound speed times the original velocity. Sound speed is kind of a measure or an indicator of how compressible a fluid is. If a fluid is fairly compressible, it'll have a low sound speed. If it's incompressible, it'll have a high sound speed. Another important design parameter is how long or what the duration of this pressure is. Well, this pressure is going to stay high until the news that the pressure increased gets up to the tank, adjusts the velocity up at the tank, and works its way back down to the valve again. So there's a pressure wave that's propagating upstream here. Pressure wave will get up here, tell the tank that this fluid down here has stopped. You need to stop pumping more fluid in here. The tank says, okay. It lets the pipe know that it's stopped and that pressure wave gets back down to the valve. So the duration is two times the amount of time it takes a wave to travel from the tank to the valve. The time to get a signal from the valve to the tank is just the length of the pipe divided by the sound speed. Now this can be used for design. It's a useful number. 